Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're continuing our series where we talk about all the crops in Farm Sim 25 by focusing on wheat, barley, and oats. Now we're combining all three of these grain crops into a single video because they all share something in common. And that is that we can put down a straw windrow after harvest and then collect that straw windrow in one of a couple various ways and use that straw in, again, multiple ways. Now we've learned through our animal videos that many of the various animals will accept straw as bedding and as a result will produce manure. We also know by our TMR video that we'll be able to use straw to make total mixed rations for our cows and water buffalo, or you could just choose to collect the straw and sell it, whichever thing fits your fancy. Now, this video is also going to focus on, well, what can you do with your grain after you harvest it? Because we have a couple different productions that we can run our grain through. We can run our wheat, barley, or oats through the grain mill and produce flour. And once we produce that flour, we can take it to a secondary production in the bakery and produce bread or cakes with that flour. Our oats can go over here to the cereal factory in combination with a few other products in order to make cereal as a finished good. In addition, we really haven't talked about storing crops in any of our videos up to this point. And for the most part, that is because up till this point, we haven't been able to technically store any of those crops that we have done videos on. That is about to change because we can store wheat, barley, and oats in any in-game silo. So I've got placed here a few different samples of the silos that are available in game. We have kind of an old school brick and concrete variety. We have more of an Americanized concrete silo here. A more modern steel silo. And then we have a singular grain bin. And we're going to be doing a separate video talking about silos specifically and demonstrating how we can make use of these grain bin silos with the use of augers. Now, once you have harvested your crop, you're going to be able to collect the straw. And in order to collect the straw, you can either use a baler, which we have already demonstrated in our hay and grass video, or you can make use of a forage wagon, which is how we're going to be collecting the straw today. In addition to harvesting our wheat, barley, and oats, a single time we're going to be coming through a second time and harvesting the same field but this time we're going to use the MacDon swather from the MacDon pack because I can tell you in my testing already we see a 24.9 percent basically 25 percent bonus to our output by swathing our crop with the MacDon and then picking that swath up with our pickup header, again, part of the MacDon pack with our harvester. And then we're also seeing a bonus with respect to our straw that we collect off those fields as well. Now we'll caveat this, that the MacDon pack is an upgrade. It is an add-on bonus at this point, a paid DLC. I received the MacDon pack as a pre-order bonus, as did many that pre-ordered the game. But at this point, now that the game is out, there is going to be a paid DLC that is the MacDon Pack. If you are interested in that, I do have a link to that down in the description below. It is using my affiliate code, so I would be much obliged if you would make use of that code. If you go ahead and pick up that MacDon Pack. Now that code is going to be able to be used for PC players only. If you are a console player, then by all means, pick up the MacDon Pack via your store of your console of choice. Now let's take a look at some infographics. Now these infographics come from the Farming Simulator Academy, which is the tutorial site over at the Giants website. And I've got information here about oats. And I've run various tests already on oat and barley. It says seeds per hectare 500. Now on field 41, which we are using because it is very near one hectare in size, I only use 329 liters 
we're the seed here in farm sim 25 so it does appear that our seed usage is down from what is listed here on this infographic from fs22 what is accurate is the planting season of march and april the growing duration of four months and the harvest duration of july and august those things are accurately reflected the yield per hectare 5700 liters i saw a yield that was 93 percent bonus to this my field was prepared at plus 95 percent i saw a 93 percent increase i actually was able to harvest 11,043 liters worth of oats using the traditional Kloss grain harvester and the Macdon header. More on that here in a moment. As far as straw, I was able to collect 71,026 liters worth of straw after I harvested with the traditional Kloss harvester. By using the swathing method using the Macdon and then following it up with the pickup header using the Kloss, I was able to harvest 13,798 liters worth of oats. That would be a 24.9% increase over the Kloss harvester, the traditional way of harvesting, or a 242% increase over the yield per hectare listed here in this infographic. In addition, I was able to harvest our straw after using the back don after using the pickup header with the Kloss, 87,291 liters, so an increase of approximately 1,600 liters of straw. Now, with respect to our barley, barley again lists needing 500 liters of seed per hectare. I used 257, basically half of that seed usage. So again, this infographic seems to be a little bit off for Farm Sim 25. What is accurate is the planting season of September and October and the harvest duration of June through July. So it has a growing duration of nine months, basically over winter and spring. Yield per hectare was 9,600 liters. Well, when I ran my Kloss harvester with the Macdon header, I saw 18,595 liter of harvest. That was again a 93% increase over what is listed here on this infographic. And my field was listed as having a plus 95% bonus. After collecting the grain, I went around and collected the straw and I basically saw the same output that I got with oats at 71,008 liters. Then comes swathing with the Macdon. After I swathed with the Macdon, I used the pickup header from the Macdon pack with the Kloss Harvester, and I received 23,228 liters worth of barley. That again was a 29 or 24.9% increase from what we had with the traditional harvester, or a 242% increase from what is listed here on this infographic. I then collected a straw, and I didn't see quite the increase of straw that I had with oats, I only saw 85,587 liters. So a little bit of a reduction there. I'm gonna call that margin of error because, well, maybe there was a couple things that I did wrong on that field and that might be a result why the straw was a little bit lower. Now, with respect to our wheat, and I haven't done this test, so we're gonna be doing this test together says our seeds per hectare will be 500 liters. So it'll be interesting to see, do I do about 250 or do I do a little bit more than that? We are planting our wheat in September and October, and then we're gonna be able to harvest the following year in July or August. So a 10 month growing duration, and we're gonna have an average yield of 8,900 liters per hectare. So keep remembering that number because we will be coming back to that in a little bit. Now let's run through the vehicle shop and where we're going to get all this stuff. I apologize. I shouldn't have been standing by the grain mill. That was a little annoying for me. I'm sure that was annoying for everyone else. Let's take a look at our vehicle shop.
So with respect to our harvesters, we're gonna come to combine harvesting and we're gonna be able to basically use any of these harvesters to harvest our grain. Now, I have the gold edition because I also happen to have pre-ordered from the Giants eShop and also have a collector's edition. So that is why this appears, if anyone has any questions. For this video, we're using the Lexion 6900 standard base configuration. In combination with your combine harvester, you're gonna need a grain header. You can use any of these grain headers for this particular video. I'm gonna be making use of the MacDon Flex Draper from the MacDon pack, just to see if there would be any sort of differences between the Flex Draper and any of these other headers. Now, of course, you can use literally any header with any harvester, but you should note that these bigger headers, well, your pipe may not clear the header. And if that's the case, you're gonna run into a little bit of difficulty in offloading your harvester. So what I would suggest is coming here to a harvester, figuring out which harvester you wanna use, coming down here to combinations, and it will tell you the appropriate combinations of headers that will work best with the particular harvester that you have selected. So we can see here the listing of headers for this particular size gloss harvester. And if I come up here and I select a smaller gloss harvester, well, you're gonna see it is gonna suggest a different set of headers. Same can be said for the larger gloss harvester. We're gonna again, we're gonna get a different set of header choices. With respect to collecting our straw, well, you're gonna be able to use a forage wagon. And in this particular video, we're gonna be using the Fent Tigro 75 VRD. Or you could come through with a square baler or round baler to bale that straw. As far as seeding goes, we're going to seed our wheat, barley, and oats with a traditional seeder. And for this video, I'm going to be using Lemkin Soltar 12. So back here in our shop, if we scroll up to seeding, we're going to find the category of seeders, and we can use any of these seeders to put our wheat, barley, or oats in the ground. For this video, we're using the Soltar 12, and we can use our seed in the form of a ballot, pallet, big bag, a big bag, or a pallet of little bags. The two big bags are going to cost $1,260 and provide you with 1,000 liters worth of seed, whereas the Pioneer pallet of bags is gonna give you 50 extra liters worth of seed for the same cost as the rest. You can also find your seed down here under objects in big bag categories, big bag pallet category, and pallets. With respect to our field prep, I have already gone ahead and prepared this field. It is been plowed, or does it need plowing? It has had lime applied to it. It has actually already been fertilized to 100% and it has already been cultivated. So it is right and ready for our seeding. And that is exactly what we are about to do. Now I'm gonna load this seeder up with 1,000 liters worth of seed, just to make it a bit easier on the math. And a load of seeder, we're just gonna pull up here alongside our big bag pallet. And we're gonna hit R to load our seed. <laughs> it looks like it has decided to load our pallet bags, as opposed to whatever, doesn't matter. So we'll start with 1,050 liters. Now the game defaults us to wheat, which is exactly what we want to put in the ground. But if we did want to change this to barley or oats, we would hit Y until the respective crop does come up. I'm just going to toggle back over to wheat. We're going to address the field as we have seen in other videos, if you have seen those.
We're going to lower our cedar down. Turn it on with B. And off to the races we go. So I'm going to keep track of how much seed we've put into the ground. And I will report back once we have finished. So we've down to 752 liters worth of seed. And that means that basically we have used 298 liters of seed. Because again, we started at 1,050 because we grabbed the wrong pallet for the seed. So at any rate, we're kind of, we're kind of in the middle there, right? Where barley used less seed at 257 liters. Oat used more seed at 329 liters. And wheat is kind of there in the middle at 298, but still it is lower than the infographics 500 liters per hectare as reported from the Academy, which was built around FS 22. Now I am going to go ahead and weed this field with herbicide because if we come over here and check the field stats out, it says we are at plus 92% and it, we have weeds growing. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and spray this and, uh, See if we can get her up to 95%. It's just like magic. We've moved into October. We have our first growth of our wheat on the field. And I think let's go ahead and talk about our crop calendar for these various crops. Again, wheat, as we mentioned with the infographic, you're going to be able to plant it in September and October. You're going to have to wait 10 months, the entirety of winter, the entirety of spring, all the way up to July before you can start to harvest that wheat. And you have until the end of August to get all the wheat off the ground. Otherwise, it's going to wilt. With respect to barley, well, again, we can plant that in September and October. Although barley is going to be available one month sooner. And the fact that we only have to wait nine months until June and July in order to get our barley off the field. Now, the the Speedy Gonzales of all of these crops is oat. Oat, you have to plant in March or April. And then, well, it's just a few short months afterwards, in July or August of the same year, you're going to be able to get those oats off the ground. So if you don't like waiting, well, then oats might be the crop for you. Let's go ahead and move forward into September and we'll check on our crop. Silly me, I was already in September, so how can I fast forward to September? It's now November and you can see we still have our first growth state basically of our wheat. Let's go ahead and move on into spring. So I'll see you all back around the March time frame. Winter is over, spring is here. And as such, our wheat has now moved into the second growth state. So don't be surprised if your wheat doesn't grow at all from November or September up till March. That's pretty normal. It's going to be in winter. It's going to be dormant. And now that this weather is starting to warm up, sun's out a little bit more longer while well, your wheat is going to start to grow like weeds. Thankfully, there aren't any weeds in this field. May is here and our crop is coming along quite nicely with respect to our wheat. So just another two months and we'll be ready to harvest. Okay, so July is here. Our wheat is ready to harvest. And it is at this stage where I am going to save the game. Because I want to be able to, after we harvest our wheat, I'm going to bring you back. We're going to tabulate our results of our wheat harvest and our straw collection after that wheat harvest. Then I'm going to load this save game back up exactly to this point. And then we are going to run the same harvest, this time using the Macdon. 
and then we will tabulate our results and close everything out. Now, as I've said, I've already run the results for barley and I've already run the results for oats. We've already kind of gone over those results, but we will go over those results again after we tabulate our wheat results. And I've done this exact method with the other two crops. So we're just going to repeat this exact method. We need to switch over to straw. Actually, let's not switch over to straw. I want to, I want to demonstrate something. So this is a little bit of a variance from what I did with our barley and our oats. But I do want to demonstrate something. So our straw will be slightly reduced with respect to our wheat harvest because we are changing up our methodology just a little bit. And that is that I wanted to demonstrate that if we come here and we check our soil composition, we can see that this area here, which we have just scattered straw to the wind, is listed as mulched. This area over here, which we did not get any straw on, is not mulched. As we now lay down a straw swath, okay, we are now going to be able to collect our straw. We're going to see that we are not leaving this field in a mulched state. We see that we are basically removing the mulch state because this field had a mulched state from theoretically the previous year's harvest. So with your wheat, barley, and oats, you have a choice. Do you get straw in a windrow such that you can collect it and use it for bedding, use it for TMR, or just sell it for additional money? Or do you scatter that straw to the wind as we demonstrated by turning off the straw swap? And if you do that, then you will not be able to collect the straw. Instead, you will basically be given a mulch state on your field. So a 2.5% bonus to the next crop that you put into this field. What you should so do is up to you. I personally think that I would rather collect the straw because I have other uses for the straw and a 2.5% yield bonus really isn't that attractive to me versus collecting the money from selling the straw. And as I'm sure we will find out, when it comes to using the Macdon, if I can get 25% more crop, 2.5% better yield, maybe it offsets by a lot. Maybe it doesn't matter. Because I also get a whole lot more straw. And therefore I can collect more money. Or make more TMR. Or get and use more manure, depending on if we are needing to use it or not. So let me go ahead and finish this and I'll report back. So our harvest is over and we have collected 17,232 liters for the wheat. If you remember from our infographic, it said that we would have 8,900 liters for the wheat. So that means that we have a yield of 93% over what the infographic said, which is pretty darn close to our 95% yield bonus of 17,232 liters. Now, let's run through our harvest totals for our barley. 
our barley, we had 18,595 liters worth of barley after harvest. So a little bit more barley than we had wheat. And we had 11,043 liters worth of oats. A decent amount less than our wheat and barley. But if we look at our prices screen here, I think we're going to see that our barley, well, it's going to have an average high of $1,137 on easy and an average low of $763. With respect to our oats, though, an average high of $1,883. With an average low of 13.14. So our oats are more valuable than our barley. And then our wheat is going to be 1190 with an average low of 832. So a little bit more than our barley, but a fair bit less than our oats kind of holds to the overall yields, doesn't it? Now let's go and collect our straw. Now remember we scattered to the wind the straw on the other end of the field. When it comes time to doing our swathing testing with the Macdon Swather, we will also not collect the straw that is on the north part of the field uh, simply to be the same as this run and that should basically then normalize our straw totals between the two tests but again we're going to expect less straw than we had with our barley and oat numbers because I didn't scatter this end of the field in those tests but more or less we're comparing our standard harvest and our macdon swathing for the same crop as opposed to our straw output between the different crops so with respect to our straw and remember our numbers are going to be lower because we didn't swath or leave a windrow to the other side of the field we collected 65,325 liters from the straw with our traditional harvest. Now we're going to load up the save game and we're going to make use of the Macdon in order to swath a crop. We're going to make use of the pickup header to then pick up that swath and separate the grain from the straw. And then we will go back and use the forage wagon to collect the straw. And then we'll compare the numbers we just got with those numbers. Okay, so here we are loaded up with the Macdon with the save game right where we were before. And let's go ahead and talk about the Macdon pack before we get too far into it. So under mods and DLCs, we have the Macdon pack, we have the M1240. This is gonna be the swather. This is gonna be the vehicle that drives everything. And we have the choice of different engines here. We have 173 horsepower or 262 horsepower. We can change the tire types. And that is pretty much it. Then we have the Macdon swathing header. So that we can get this with transport wheels or not. And the way this can work is we can transport this like we would transport a grain header. And we'd actually put the Macdon in reverse drive to do that. It's a pretty neat setup. We then have the mowing head. So this is what we're going to use to mow our grass. Then we have the pickup head, which is going to be used on our standard harvester to pick up the swath that we're putting down. And then we have the FD140 flex draper. This is actually the header that we're using on our Kloss harvester. So this is gonna be a traditional grain header, 12.5 meters versus the swather, which is 12.2 meters. So they're very similar in working with. The swather will be able to swath wheat, 
barley, oat, canola, and soybeans. So those are the crops that we are going to do this test with, with respect to comparing standard harvest to swathing harvest. And the way this works, we're just going to turn our header on, we're going to drop it down, and we are going to basically dive into the field. We're going to use one headland. We're going to go ahead and set that up so we can keep our nice line straight. And the way this works is it cuts the crop and gently lays it on the header. There's belts that move it toward the middle. And then the swather just runs over top of that and straddles it for the most part. And now we're going to go ahead and make a cut on either side of the field. And then I just want to demonstrate using the cloth harvester and the pickup header. This is exactly how I did it with the other two crops. Is I did a cut off across the top of the field. I did two cuts along the long sides. And then I harvested the swath with the standard harvester such that I wasn't driving over the crop too much when I was harvesting the rest of the field. And then I also went ahead and collected that straw. So again, I wasn't driving over any of that as I was harvesting the field. So let me finish this cut and I'll come back with our cloth harvester and demonstrate the pickup header. So if we take a quick look at our wheat swath, we can see that we can actually see the wheat heads in this texture. So the grain is still here. All we've done is cut it and lay it down nice and gently on the field. Now we can come through with our standard rain harvester with this custom pickup header. And you'll see what this header does is it gently picks the crop up off the field and then runs it through the harvester. And since it is being gentle with the crop, then we are in essence getting more yield because we are losing less of the crop. Just like we did with our wheat harvest, we scattered the top cut across the field and we're going to get that as a mulching bonus. And now we are leaving straw behind and let's compare the straw windrow. Notice the heads are gone now. We don't actually see the grain on there anymore. So that is our straw windrow versus our wheat swath. All right, let me go ahead and finish this out and I'll be back and we'll close this video out. All right, so let's crunch some numbers here. We finished our wheat harvest. I have 21,533 liters in this trailer. And again, this wheat was harvested with the Macdon. Then we used the pickup header with our traditional harvester to extract the grain from the straw. Then we used our forage wagon to pick the straw up. So 21,532. That is a 24.9% base, 25% increase for all intents and purposes above and beyond the traditional harvest with the traditional Macdon grain header and the Kloss harvester, which again netted us 17,232 liters off of a field that had a plus 95% bonus. We have basically a plus 93% bonus off of the baseline harvest crop value of 8,900 liters per the Giants Academy infographic.
Now, as far as our straw goes, I collected two full loads from our Fent. Our Fent holds 40,500 liters. So that would be 81,000 liters worth of straw from the field that, again, used the Macdon, the pickup header with the harvester, and then our forage wagon. That is a 24% increase from the straw that we had just off the Kloss harvester itself at 65,325 liters. If we go back now to our barley. Remember I said our barley with the traditional harvester, we had 18,595 liters. With our swather using the Macdon, sorry, and then the pickup header, we increased by 25% to 23,228 liters. Our straw with the Kloss Harvester, 71,008 liters. Our straw after swathing with the Macdon, 85,587 liters. Oats, our standard harvest with our Kloss Harvester, 11,043 liters. We had 13,798 liters with the Macdon then the pickup header in the Kloss Harvester, a 24.9% bonus. With respect to our straw, we had 21,026 liters worth of straw. Sorry, 71,026 liters worth of straw with the Kloss Harvester. And 87,291 liters worth of straw after using the Macdon a 23% bonus. So the straw bonus is, is around the same bonus as our harvest, although it wasn't as consistent. And I would attribute it not being as consistent to that the header we used on both the Macdon and the traditional Kloss Harvester was just a little bit too narrow to get all of the field without having a little bit left over. So there was this little remainder left over here in this general area. And what I have found is the Macdon pickup header that picks up straw swath does not necessarily like to pick up small windrows of swath. So we will leave a little bit here that couldn't be picked up. If I bring that header back over here, it likely isn't going to be able to pick up these little bits here and there of straw swath. And as a result of not being able to pick up the straw swath, it couldn't pick up the straw. In addition, there was a couple areas where, well, we had straw that came out late. And it's over here on the other side of the field. We couldn't pick it up. Yada, yada, yada. So that's why I'm attributing a little bit more variance with our straw collection over our grain collection. But it's pretty clear that the Macdon, while in a previous video we saw, gave no bonus to grass is giving us a bonus for wheat, barley, and oats. We're going to continue to do this test when we get to our canola video and our soybean video. See if we continue to see that 25% bonus. Now, what are we going to do with this grain? We talked about storing it, and we talked about being able to use it in production. I want to demonstrate storing it. Now we know we can store the straw from our hay and grass video. We can store that in the hayloft, which is gonna be found here under silos, hayloft, right? This we can store our straw in if we wanted to store it loose, or of course we could bale it. And if we baled it, then we could put it in our bale storage building. 
if we restore our grain, well, we could just come up here to any one of these silos and dump our grain. And then we'd be able to also bring our grain out of it. If we have one of these single bins, I can't, the camera won't let me get to that. If we have one of the singular bin silos, well, we're going to have to use an auger in order to pull grain out of that. I'm going to have a separate video on how to do all of that. But basically, we're going to come down here and we're going to find our augers under miscellaneous belt systems. The meridian will be used to take grain out of the silo. Meanwhile, the convey all will use to put grain into the silo. But again, we're going to have a completely separate video on that a little bit later. If we look here at our production, our grain mill, well, we can bring barley, oat, and wheat to our grain mill. Five units of wheat is going to make four units of flour. 30 units of barley is going to make 22 units of flour. And 15 units of oat is going to make 15 units of flour. So this is a one-to-one. -one. Meanwhile, with our wheat and our barley, we're putting in more grain than we're getting flour out. With respect to our cereal factory, well, we're going to be able to bring oats to our cereal factory. And we can make chocolate cereal. 36 units of corn, 36 units of oat, 10 units of chocolate, 10 units of honey, to 20 units of cereal. Or we can make raisin cereal, 40 units of corn, 40 units of oats, 10 units of raisins, 10 units of honey, 20 units of cereal. The other two cereals are going to be exclusively for rice and therefore are not going to be able to make use of our oats. Our bakery is going to be a down process with respect to our flour that we make. And we can make bread with our flour, 90 units of bread for 45 units, 90 units of flour, 45 units of bread, basically a two to one. Two units of flour is going to make one unit of bread. Or we could use cakes, and that is going to require a lot more ingredients. But eight units of flour, eight units of sugar, eight units of milk, eight units of eggs, butter, and strawberries are all gonna make 21 units worth of cake. What you should decide to do with respect to your grain is basically up to you. Now we could also use our wheat and barley with respect to our pigs. So right, that's also gonna be eligible for pig food. So guys, I hope that has given you a good idea as to what your wheat, barley, and oat is good for. Also, how to harvest, how to seed, and how to care for your wheat, barley, and oats overall. Let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of our tips and tricks series? Are you looking forward to the next video? I've got one hopefully scheduled every day for the remainder of this month. If you're watching it fairly soon after the video is dropped. Otherwise, this is basically a historical reference for anyone coming into the game that is not quite sure how to do any one of these specific crops. Until next time, happy farming.